if you plan on upgrading your entire PC or just some parts of it to improve the performance of local AI tools, then this video is for you. And whether you like building PCs yourself or you prefer a pre-built one, I will try to guide you through the hardware jungle by looking at the recent developments in hardware and then going through all these components while focusing on the ones that have the biggest impact on local AI tools. Always explaining what that impact is and giving you different options for different budgets with the goal to help you making better decisions on which hardware to buy. This is AI Voice Tutor and there are no sponsorships in this video, which means that everything you are about to hear is my honest opinion. If you've been following my channel, then you may know that I've built a pretty decent PC for local AI in 2023. And you can find out more about it in this video I made back then. The PC worked great for two years and then something happened, but more on that later. If you ask yourself, why spend all that money on expensive hardware when you can just use AI tools that run in the cloud? The main benefit of cloud AI services is obviously that they are available on any device with a web browser and that they sometimes run models that you won't be able to run on a regular GPU. However, those models are usually censored or biased and won't let you create certain images. With local AI tools, you don't have to wait for your images to start generating or worry about any potential limits. It also works offline and there aren't any outages. First, let's look at the CPU and we start with Intel. That's right, Intel screwed up big time by possibly causing permanent damage to most of their CPUs from two generations. They eventually fixed the issue, but the damage was done already. Intel did extend the warranty, so if you suspect you're affected, you can get your CPU replaced easily. But there was no recall issued, which is what I think should have happened. Thankfully, there is some decent competition around, and that is AMD. Some CPUs now feature a neural processing unit, which is optimized for running AI tasks, but in its current state, it's mostly useful for mobile devices such as laptops which I guess is why the latest desktop AMD processors don't come with an MPU. But even if they aren't very powerful yet, it is possible that some clever developers will come up with tools that make good use of them. So here's a list of CPUs with NPU in case you do want to get one. Just keep in mind that most of them are mobile CPUs. Here are two AMD CPUs that I'd recommend depending on what you want to use your PC for. If you want to use 3D modeling tools like Blender or if you want to play some CPU intense games, then I would get the Ryzen 9900X 3D, which is the best AMD CPU at the moment. But if you only use your PC for AI, then there's no real need for a fast CPU and you could just get a far less expensive one such as the 9600X. Once you decided on which CPU to get, you can go and pick a mainboard. Just make sure that the mainboard has the right socket for your CPU. Both of the AMB CPUs are using the AM5 socket, and unless you want to have the latest chipset and Wi-Fi 7, then you could just get the ASUS B650 Plus instead of the B850 Plus. Even though the B650 is a bit older, both mainboards will work fine with the latest GPUs and AMD processors. Next is the CPU cooling, and although you also want to make sure that it fits your CPU socket, most air coolers and all-in-one liquid cooling systems I've seen work with all modern sockets. Generally, I would recommend getting a liquid cooling system such as the Corsair Nautilus 360, but if you don't use a high-end CPU or if you don't use CPU-intense software, then you can get a relatively cheap CPU air cooler such as the Thermoride Assassin. And if you like being able to see the CPU or the liquid temperature right on the CPU itself, you could get the IQ H150i, which also comes with a controller for additional RGB fans. Now let's look at the most important piece of hardware for running local AI tools, and that is the GPU. With three major brands offering GPUs, you can break down the decision on which brand to get with one simple question. 
and that is, do you mind not being able to run many or even most of AI tools that have been released so far? If your answer is yes, then you should get an NVIDIA card, and you should only consider getting an Intel Arc or a Radon GPU if your answer to that question is no. If you look at the latest AI tools released on Pinocchio, for example, you will notice that still many of them only support NVIDIA. However, this doesn't mean that the other tools will all work on Intel Arc or Radon cards on Windows. This is why you should check and see if the AI tools you want to use work on Intel Arc or AMD GPUs before you buy one. SD Next is a good example of a tool that runs on all hardware, but tools like that are still the exception. Besides the manufacturer, the amount of VRAM is the second most important factor when buying a GPU. For advanced image or video generation, 12 GB is the bare minimum. And I would recommend getting a GPU with at least 16 GB of VRAM. And obviously, the more VRAM you can afford to get, the better your overall user experience will be. But there are ways to run larger models, even with low VRAM, and we will talk about that when we get to the system RAM in a bit. At the end of 2024, Intel released the B-Series, which is the second generation of their GPUs. They come with 10 and 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and Intel seems to be doing a great job at supporting the AI community with the software and tools they need to make more AI tools run on Intel Arc. Hopefully, this is going to turn Intel GPUs into a real competition for NVIDIA in the near future. AMD released their new GPUs in 2025, but for whatever reason, AMD seems mostly focused on gaining. And if you only care about that, an AMD GPU will give you similar performance than NVIDIA for less money. But the problem with AI is, that from what I can tell, the AMD AI framework still doesn't work too well on Windows, since their focus with that has been on Linux for the past years. This is also the reason for NVIDIA dominating the AI market. There are countless of research and AI projects around the globe that are using NVIDIA hardware and software, because there simply wasn't any competition in that field. NVIDIA released their 50 series GPUs in early 2025, but getting one isn't easy. After three months, I would have expected things to have calmed down, but the warehouses still seem empty. Who knows what happened to all their stock? When we look at these entry-level GPUs from all three vendors, we see that the Radon has more VRAM than the other two cards. But again, unless you have very good reasons to get a Radon or an Intel Arc, just get the RDX 3060. It's a few years old, but it should give you the best AI experience out of these three relatively cheap GPUs. In the medium price range, you could get the new RDX 5060 Ti, which with its 16 gigabytes of DDR7 RAM will run most AI tools very well. Or you could get the 7900 XT for about the same price, but with more VRAM that is slower. Just like you could get the best AMD GPU out there, which comes with 24 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM. Again, only consider these AMD cards if you know they work with the tools you want to use. Because if you want to get an NVIDIA card with 24 GB of video RAM, you could get the 3090, which is still somewhat available. Unlike the 4090, which is still the second best GPU in the world, but it's harder to get and currently costs a lot more than it did two years ago. By the way, the prices you are seeing here are what the hardware costs at the time I'm making this video. And I really hope that they will have adjusted back to normal by the time some of you are watching this. Whatever those new normal prices will be. The 5090 is also far more expensive than its suggested retail price. But if you are lucky to be able to get one, it will give you the best overall AI experience out there. Which would have been even better if they gave it 48 gigabytes of video RAM. However, you can't talk about NVIDIA without talking about the power connector, which already caused issues on the 40 series even after they had revised it. So I was very surprised to see them using it again on GPUs that require even more power than the 4090. It's very hard to tell how widespread the issues with the power connector are, 
but some experts say that the connector is designed very poorly for that kind of power usage and for causing these kind of temperatures. That brings us to my Sotac RTX 4090, which sadly died after two years in use. I'm not sure what caused it since to me the power connector looked fine on both the GPU and the cable itself. And I can't say anything bad about the Sotac or Amazon support. They were both very helpful, but the main problem was that my GPU died in January right before the new GPUs came out, so it couldn't be replaced or repaired. But I did get my money back from Amazon. Obviously, I would have preferred to have it replaced by another 4090, but now I would have to pay a lot more than I did in 2023, so I'm still without a GPU. More on my personal situation near the end of the video. Let's go home. Good job. Next, let's look at the power supply unit. Once you know which GPU and CPU you're going to use, you can just find the recommended PSU power in this list. And you won't have to worry about additional hardware, such as fans, liquid cooling systems, or USB devices, since those are already included in the calculations. I used to always buy my PSU from a certain brand, but I had a really bad experience with their support. Which is why I would now get my PSU from Corsair and unless you plan to have additional hardware in your PC that requires power cables, then you should be fine with the RM750E, which comes with a native power connector for the NVIDIA cards, but you can obviously also use them with the HX series too. It's just that the cable won't have the same connector on the PSU end as well. When we talk about system RAM, we also need to talk about offloading, which allows you to use AI models that are larger than your video RAM is. Ideally, you only offload a smaller portion of the model while the biggest part stays in video RAM, because the more you offload, the slower it gets. However, if your total video RAM plus system RAM is more than 80 gigabytes combined and you offload about 60 gigabytes into system memory, you can run one of the best AI models out there at about two to three tokens a second. Therefore, I would recommend getting at least 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. If you want to be able to run even larger models, then you might want to get twice the amount of system RAM instead. Next up is storage. And as you probably know already, the models can be quite large. If you are someone that likes to always try out new model files, then this can quickly add up. In some tests I ran, there was only a small improvement between a slow and a fast SSD, but this also adds up over time. I recommend getting an up-to-date SSD such as these ones. The Western Digital is a bit more expensive than the Samsung, and it's hard to tell if they are also more reliable, but just be careful with SSDs from lesser-known brands. The final part we will look at is the PC case, and that's mostly a matter of personal taste. The Height Y60 seems to be very popular at the moment. It has a unique look and the GPU can only be mounted vertically. If you like it a bit more traditional, you could either get the Corsair 4000D or the 7000D if you prefer to have plenty of space in your case. That's the one I have, and as you can see, there's plenty of room even with a huge GPU. You can also do really nice cable management if that's important to you. And before you buy a case, it's always a good idea to check the description to make sure that your GPU and CPU cooling system fit. Now that we've looked at all parts and almost reached the end of the factory, we can put together an entry-level PC such as this one. Currently, the components cost about $1,200. For this high-end PC, I chose the 4090 since right now it's not quite as overpriced as the 5090 is, but it still adds up to $4,700. However, since it's not just the GPU prices that vary from day to day, it's a good idea to keep checking the prices regularly for a while before you order them. You will find the links to all components as well as to the pre-built PCs in the video description. And speaking of pre-built PCs, they used to be more expensive than building them on your own, but these days they seem to be a cheat code to get the GPUs and some of the other components at a price that's much closer 
to the suggested retail price. If you look at this entry-level pre-built PC, for example, while some components aren't as fast or as powerful as the entry-level components we put together in this video, for $760, you're getting a decent CPU, but also an RDX 3060, which costs over $400 alone. And if you can live with using an Intel CPU, then you can get a pre-built PC with an RDX 5090 for 5000, which is a lot. But we have to consider that the 5090 alone is 3700 right now. Not all pre-built PCs are cheaper than building your own though. And you should always check and look up some of the prices of the components of the pre-builds so that you can tell whether or not it's a good deal. As a summary, I recommend getting an NVIDIA GPU with at least 12 GB of VRAM, but if your budget allows it, you should aim for at least 16 GB. As the CPU isn't too important and since NPUs are at a very early stage, you should get any recent AMD CPU that suits your budget. With a 2TB SSD, you have enough room to try out many different models and with at least 64GB of system RAM, you can run highly advanced models that won't fit in your GPU, even if it will be slower. So what's your plan? Are you waiting for prices to come down or are you maybe planning to buy a pre-built PC? For me, it's quite frustrating. Normally, I wouldn't have had a problem with getting a 3060 or a 5060 Ti, but since I used the 4090 for two years, it's hard to imagine going back to a less powerful GPU now. I can't even buy a pre-built PC since I got everything here except for the GPU. A few weeks ago, I got tired of waiting and I got an OpenAI subscription so that I could use Sora and 11 apps for the voice cloning. I will make a video about switching from local AI to cloud AI and I'll keep you guys up to date on my and on the overall GPU situation. So make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you've learned something new, I'd appreciate if you liked or shared the video and I'll see you next time.